Hi, Antonio. <laughs> um, it's really good to be back at Make the Road in New York because we filmed a lot here. Yes. <laughs> but, but it's been a while. Oh, hey. Yay, it worked. How are you doing? Let me not get the, my fridge in the shop. People have seen your fridge before. That's true. Good morning. Good morning. We're not filming right right now, are we? We are filming right right now. <laughs> but don't worry, we can cut this part. Do you have a question? We're going to do updates today. Twenty sixteen, we're in California for the premiere of Indivisible at Cinequest Film Festival. Tell me, what was it like watching with an audience? But it was a full house, and that was just great in itself. We were just excited that it was finally showing. For me, I didn't. I was not expecting to see the reaction of the folks in the room, and to see that you know, even people were not expecting us. They were still clapping, and they were still like crying in the middle of the movie. And I mean, we got that standing ovation at the end, which was very unexpected. It was a really proud moment to know that our film was one that people were interested in watching and that clearly impacted people. We were able to send a clear message to the American audience that, you know, we're here to stay and we're here to fight for our families. I did ultimately decide to adjust my status uh, through Gil, my husband. Um, and because of that, I was able to get my green card and I'm currently, so now a legal permanent resident. So the great thing is now with having my green card, I can, I can travel whenever I want to go see my mom. Uh, so I got to go this past Christmas. Gil and I, um, had a really big Christmas surprise for everybody. I'm pregnant. So my mom and my dad and everybody got to find out that they're going to be grandparents again. So that was just what made it even better. This la last trip, uh, it's kind of very special for me because um, I took my mom for a vacation for the first time in her life. Uh, I always had the, this dream of taking my parents um, to places where they never, you know, could imagine. So for me, it was very special. You have something really big coming up next month. What is it? Yeah. <laughs> Happy and exciting, but also a little bit of sad, right? It's a sad. <laughs> I will be the first one um, to graduate from from my from my family with a with a bachelor's degree. And at the same time, it's. Kind of the reality, <laughs> and it's just heartbreaking. But we know that our parents are very proud of the work that we have done, and even though they're not here physically, they will be here on their spirit and their heart. So it's gonna be exciting. I mean, my parents are not gonna be here, but I know my my chosen family is gonna be there. Um, you will be there. Hi everyone, we're at Hanato's graduation. This day has been 10 years in the making. We're so excited. She's about to walk the stage, so watch her first. Yeah! <laughs> I'm glad I'm finally done. It was a long time coming and it was really hard to get to it was really hard to get to graduation. It was a little bit bittersweet because, you know, my mom and my brother and sister couldn't be there, and that was really tough for me. Tell me about the last time you went to Brazil to see your family. I feel like every trip with my family, like, we have we have a lot of fun. Um, I mean, we have our fights, which is normal, like, family fights. It just always feels like an adventure with my siblings because, like, you know, we go hiking. It's, like, a way more intense form of hiking where I feel like, Am I gonna die? Um, and why did my brother put me through this? Um, and when will you get to go back to Brazil to see your family? When? I I have no idea when I'm gonna be able to see my family again. 
On September 5th, um, our current administration, unfortunately, decided to rescind, um, basically um, put a stop to people being, being able to apply for deferred action for childhood arrivals, which is DACA. So with the rescinding of DACA and the March um, deadline approaching, there was a, a big push for Congress to pass the DREAM Act. We are outside the Capitol. There was just a really awesome rally in a local church for a clean DREAM Act now. That is right. Next week is going to be crucial. They're going to be uh, negotiating a uh, uh, DREAM Act next week. Uh, he just kept going back and forth and Congress couldn't come to an agreement. They wanted a lot, a, a lot of enforcement. And that's something that undocumented youth were not willing to do because we were not willing to put our parents in the crossfire and have them deported while we get to stay here. But then we had different federal judges coming out and saying that no, what the administration did was unconstitutional and that there wasn't a good enough reason as to why DACA was rescinded. And so then because of that, we were able to at least start submitting renewals. For everyone that has DACA right now, um, I would encourage to um, look into renewing their DACA while they can. My DACA expired 2019. Well, if my DACA expires um, and I can't renew, then I will definitely lose my job at the university. Um, there's nothing they can do about that. And I think the thing that's the hardest to come to terms with is the travel aspect of it. Um, my family is a really big, important, like, important part of my life. And not being able to share moments with them, I think it's the hardest. And so I just want this to be really clear for people watching. When will you be able to see your family again? <laughs> I don't know. Um, <clears throat> well, first of all, we need to pass the Dream Act, um, uh, which is with these politicians that we have in Washington, we don't know when that, when that, that is gonna happen. I mean, my hope is they do it soon and they stop playing with our lives and they stop playing politics with, with the m many dreamers out there. Um, but I mean, I, I've also been thinking about it like, okay, I'm, I'm gonna be graduating. Um, and if my DACA fires in the next two years, I will just probably go to Mexico. Um, and it's sad because a lot of people are thinking the same thing. But it's not, not, it's not because we're giving up. I feel like we just want to be recognized as a human beings. The undocumented community, undocumented youth have been fighting so hard. Um, but there's only so much you can do alone to get the DREAM Act or immigration reform. And what, you know, I've seen people react to this film and they react really positively. They want to do something. So for people watching this, they need to join the fight. What's the number one thing you want people who are watching who are citizens? What can they do? So elections are coming up. November is going to be critical for many, for many of us, I, not only dreamers, but also for women's rights, African-Americans' rights. Um, so if you have the privilege to vote, this is the time. Um, so don't forget to vote and don't forget to do your research because that's equally important because um, we don't want to vote just anyone in. We want people who are going to believe in the things that we do and actually take action when, you know, they get elected. I think for those of us that have the opportunity to, to be permanent residents at this moment, it would definitely be to work towards becoming a U.S. citizen. Um, start towards that process so that you have the ability to vote, um, so that you can vote in local elections and sheriff elections and presidential elections and all these elections that make a difference um, because our families are being targeted, we're being targeted at all, at all levels. And I think if you are a U.S. citizen already, to make sure that you go out and vote.